In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a player health bar so that when the player receives damage from an enemy, you will see the health bar be updated and show those lives. And remember, if you like what you see, please remember to hit like or subscribe. I will also leave links to the assets in the description below. So that the player can receive some damage from the enemy, let's begin by creating a hurt box for our player. So open up the player scene. And in the player, let's add a child node and let's choose area 2D. We'll rename this as hurt box and then add another child node and then create a collision shape. In the shape option, let's choose the new capsule shape 2D. And as you can see, the shape has the same color as our previous collision shape. So in the debug color, let's just change this to something that is different. And then position the collision shape on top of the player. And we'll just make this a little bit wider so it can receive the damage. And then I'll just drag this down, but I won't make it touch the floor because the previous collision shape that we've created here will handle our ground. For the hurt box, let's just scroll down and on the layer, we need to pop this hurt box on top of the player layer. And then we want it to receive the enemy. So let's put the enemy on the mask and then let's turn off the ground. Let's rename this collision shape to the hurt box collision shape. Now select the hurt box and in the node, under signals, let's create a signal to our player. So let's choose the body entered option and then click connect. And then let's connect that to our player script. In the on hurt body entered method, let's just cast this to node 2D. And what we would like to do is to check the body to see if the body is in the enemy group. So we can type a body dot is in group enemy. Then what we want to do is print a debug statement to our output so we can monitor that. We'll say enemy entered. So once the enemy enters this method, we can check if it's in this group and then print that statement here. What we'd like to do is if we just pop over to the test level, in the test level, I've added our enemy crab. And what I'd like to do is for if I zoom in, the enemy, when it touches the player, the enemy will be detected by this script here. So what I can do is check if my enemy is in a group. We can do this by going back to the test level and click on enemy crab scene and click on the root node. And if I look at my tab here for node and then check groups, we'll just check this is in a group and it's currently got no groups assigned. So we'll create a group called enemy. So type enemy and then add. On the root node for the enemy crab, let's just check the inspector and let's just check our layers. So currently the enemy crab is living on the ground layer. So we need to change this to be our enemy layer. And then for the mask, we should keep this for the ground so that the enemy can detect the ground. But what we'd like to do is also detect the player. So let's click option two for the mask. And now let's run the game. And if we run, we can see that we get the enemy entered option in our print. So that is now working correctly. Let's stop that. Now that the enemy can make contact with the player, we need to create a health manager script so that we can manage the decrease in the health and increase in the health and also pass those values to our health UI. So let's begin by creating our health manager script. If we just go to our scripts folder, what we need to do is just uh, right click a new script and we'll call this health manager and just create that script and then go to project, project settings, auto load, and then go into the scripts folder and open that health manager script. Click add and we'll leave this as enabled. This will create a singleton for our health manager, which will be instantiated throughout the game. Let's close that and let's open our health manager script. So in our script, let's begin by creating some variables. So we'll say for max health, we'll give that a default of integer three, and then we'll say for current health, and that is also an integer. Let's create our ready function and we'll just assign our current health to be our max health. First of all, let's create a decrease health method. This will decrease the health when the enemy makes contact. So we'll say function decrease health. We'll put a health amount in there, which is also an integer. So we can just say current health is minus equals to the health amount. But what we need to do is if our current health 
is less than zero, we need to make sure that the current's health doesn't go below zero. So we'll just set that to zero. Let's create another method for increase health, also passing in the health amount again. And in this method, let's say current health is plus equal to our health amount. But if the current health is greater than max health, then current health is equal to the max health so that we can't have too much health if we collect too many pickups for our health. Let's just save that. And in the two methods, let's add some print statements. So we'll say print and we'll call the method. So we'll just say decrease health. And then in our increase health method, let's copy and paste that and just change this to the increase health. Let's go back to the player script and inside the player script on the hurt body entered, when the enemy is entered, then let's call our health manager script. So we now have an instance to that because we've added it to auto load. And then we'll say health manager and decrease the health, but we need to pass in a health amount. At the moment, I'm just gonna put a default value of one, but ideally we do need to get that value from the enemy. We can do this by going to our enemy crab, go to the enemy crab script, and let's export a new variable. So we'll say export bar, and we'll call this damage amount. We'll put a default value of one, and we can export that value because for the enemies, you can then change that damage amount using your inspector so that each enemy can have a different da damage amount. Now, when we go back to the player, in this body, we can take that damage amount value. So what we'll do is in here, we'll say enemy entered and get the damage amount from the body. And using duct typing, so if damage amount exists on the script which is attached to the body, it should be able to pull that value. And what we'll do, we'll test that. I'm also then going to add this to here. Let's run this. And let's test the game. So as you can see now, it says enemy entered one. So this is working correctly. Now that we've finished creating our health manager script, we can now start to create our health bar and then place that health bar onto our game screen. In the health bar, I'm going to use two new assets. I'm going to use the full heart and the empty heart for the player's lives. So just head over to www.kenny.nl and in the pixel platformer set for the category 2D, just download these assets. I will leave the link in the description below. In your root folder, let's create a new folder and we'll call this UI. In the UI folder, let's create another folder called health bar. And from the Kenny pixel platformer set, once you've unzipped the files, in the tiles folder, if we just scroll down, we should have a heart and an empty heart. So just take tile 0044 and tile 0046 and drag that over into the new health bar folder. Let's rename these files. So we'll call this heart1 and heart0. Now let's begin creating the health bar. So go scene, new scene, and we'll choose a 2D scene and let's rename the node 2D to the health bar. Add a child node and let's choose Sprite 2D. We'll rename this node to be Heart 1. And in the texture, let's drag over Heart 1. Let's open our health bar into the scene and let's just reposition the health bar. So using the arrow keys, we just want to position the sprite so that the top of the pixels just sits underneath the X axis and the left hand side is on the Y axis. Now let's duplicate that for three hearts. So we've got heart two and using the arrow keys, I'm gonna move that again and then duplicate that one more time and then move that over. If we then just click the health bar, you can see that the position is in the top left corner. So when we fit this or attach the health bar to our game screen, this will also be positioned in the top left corner of the game screen. And then just save that into the health bar folder. Our next step is to create a script for our health bar so that we can change the sprites based on what the player's current health is. So we'll click attach script and we'll just call this health bar and create. And let's begin by exporting our textures. So we'll set up export heart one and texture 2D. Let's copy and paste this and we'll say heart zero. Then let's select the three hearts and let's drag that in and attach these into our script. And then let's begin creating our ready method. Now in our ready method, we want to receive a signal from our health manager. 
if we go back to the health manager script when we call decrease health or increase health we want to be able to emit this value the current health value into the ui so what we need to do is create a signal in our health manager we can do this by creating signal and we'll call it on health change then in the decrease health method under the print statement we'll say on health change and then emit and pass in the current health to push this value along to the receiver and copy and paste that into our increase health head back to the health bar script and in the ready method let's assign ourselves and connect to that signal so that in this script we can receive that value so we'll say health manager on health change and we're going to now connect to the signal and we'll say on player health change we now need to create this function so it's a function and this is going to get the player's current health which is an integer now based on the player's current health we need to update the heart texture the player's current health has a maximum value of three and that's the maximum lives so what we'll do we'll start with our maximum amount so we'll say if play current health is equal to three then heart three which is the third heart dot texture equals heart one else if the player current health is less than three then heart three dot texture equals heart zero and we can copy and paste this statement for two and one let's do that we'll sign two here and then use heart two and then heart one here The script is now complete so let's now create a game screen and attach our health bar head over back to the ui folder create a new scene and we'll choose other node and we want a canvas layer for our ui choose canvas layer create that and then rename this to game screen save that node and pop this node into the ui folder on the game screen let's now add the health bar as you can see because we popped it in the top left it's now nicely positioned against the x-axis and the y-axis head over to your test level and then attach the game screen the viewport is this blue box here and because we're using a canvas layer it will sit in this box the reason why i create my game above the x-axis is so that it's very clear to see the ui and we don't get any obstruction to game elements if we zoom in on the health bar i'd like to put a margin of 10 on the left hand side and on the top head back to the health bar and go to the game screen and let's now add a position on here so if i select the health bar and then just use the transform we'll say 10 and 10 as you can now see in the test level i've now got a nice margin on there head back over to the health bar and then click the health bar and we'll see that we've exported these two values so go into the health bar assign the heart one texture and the heart zero texture so let's play the game and as we run into the enemy we start to lose our player lives and on the last life what we'd ideally like to do is to show a player death scene an effect and also when the player hits an enemy we'd like to show some hit effect in my next tutorial i will create a new player death effect and i will use shaders to create a hit effect now that brings us to the end of this tutorial if you like what you see please remember to hit like and subscribe and thank you for watching